Hi everyone, my name is Justin Lake from Think Numbers. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to calculate your operating working capital. Now this is really, really important stuff to understand in practice if you're running a business, because this is all about understanding how well the business is being funded on a day-to-day -day basis. And the way you actually, we're going to do this for Woolworths. So if you go to Woolworths, uh, Woolworths which is a large supermarket chain within Australia, you can download the 2017 annual report and you can actually take their profit and loss statement and their balance sheet and we can start to look at this. We're not actually going to need to use it, the profit and loss statement. We're going to purely look at the balance sheet for the purposes of calculating operating working capital. Let's define what is working capital. Now, if you just took pure working capital, you would just take your current assets and you'd minus your current liabilities. That's your normal working capital. Well, what we're actually going to do is we're going to be looking at operating working capital, which is slightly more sensitive and looking at the levers of what we can really control. Now to actually work out your operating working capital is slightly different. We're going to be looking at our trade and other receivables. We're going to add our inventory and what we're going to then do is we're going to deduct our, I'll just see if I can move this bit out of the way, our trade and other payables. And the reason why we're going to be looking at these three in particular is because they're the three things that we really have very strong control over within our business. If you think about it, our trade and other receivables is all the invoices that our customers, uh, that we, we collect the, the cash from our customers. So again, we can control that by controlling the terms of how quickly the customers pay us. We can, we can use different methods to try and collect that a lot faster. With inventory, likewise, we can choose how much stock that we actually order, how much we hold. We can put sales on to try and discount it and move the stock quicker. So there's a lot of control that we have as a business owner to actually control that. And thirdly, our payables, Again, they're all of our supplier payments. Again, we have a lot of control over who we choose to buy off, how much we buy, negotiating the terms of how quickly we pay them. So let's calculate this for the current year. If we go to the 2017 annual report, we're gonna take the number of their current trade and other receivables. So 744.7. We're gonna add our inventories of 4080.4. And we're going to deduct our trade and other payables of 6684.7 million. Let's work that out. If you want to grab a calculator, you can calculate along. 744.7 plus 4080.4 minus 6684.7. And that actually works out to be negative 1.859.6 million. Now, why would, you're probably trying to understand why would, is negative, is that actually a good thing or a bad thing? Well, if you think about this, they've actually got a lot more suppliers that they owe money to than stock that they even have or customers that they have. Normally you'd think, well, hold on a sec, do we even have enough assets to cover our debts? Now, if it was any, if it was any other business, I would probably be a little bit concerned actually, uh, that don't, that they don't have enough assets to even cover their short-term debts. However, this is actually Woolworths. It's an extremely successful um, supermarket chain within Australia. And if we look at actually calculating how quickly they're turning some of their inventory over, and as well as how quickly they're collecting the, the cash from their customers, you would, you would actually wouldn't be concerned at all. Because you could see that they're turning this over so quickly that by the time they pay their suppliers, they've probably turned their stock over multiple times. And this is all about negotiating really good terms with their suppliers. So they probably pay their suppliers on really long terms, yet they're turning over their inventory really quickly and collecting their cash really quickly. So this is actually an ultimate place to be because the way they're actually funding their business is through a lot of their supply network. And you can see that this is the case. So we've calculated that for 2017. Let's do the same thing for 2016. So 763.9 plus inventory of 4558.5 minus 
in uh, the trade dead trade table, sorry, of six two six six point one. And let's calculate that. If you want to grab your calculator with me, you can work this out. So we've got 763.9 plus 4558.5 minus 6266.1. And we actually get minus 943.7, which is actually, it's almost half of what it was last year. And what, what, what's some of the key reasons for that? Let's have a quick look. Well, I think the main thing is they're actually holding a lot less inventory than they were in the prior year. So that's almost half a billion dollars difference. So that, that would actually be making quite a big difference. And what else is there? They're actually holding quite a bit less debt than they were last year compared to this year. So you can see that they've got more, more inventory and less debt. So therefore that's the difference between the two. Now, is that a good thing or bad thing? Well, I think it's still they're still in a pretty good position because they're obviously funding more of their business through suppliers. So they're getting more, there's more, there's less cash out the door than there is coming in, if you know what I mean. Because they're actually, by the time they pay their supplier, they've already turned their stock over multiple times and collected cash from their customers. So it's actually within their favor and they're actually in a position where they're, it's being funded through their suppliers. All right, well, look, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson today on operating working capital. Feel free to grab other balance sheets and calculate this. Um, it's a really important way to be able to manage your business and to look at the three levers within your business that you actually have control over, which is your trade and other receivables, your inventory, and your trade and other payables. All right, we'll see you in some other lessons in the future. Bye.